Hey guys, it's Abby, and for today's video, I'm going to share with you how I started my business 10 years ago. I know, right? It's been actually 10 years. I started being on the internet around 17, and I'm currently 27. So today, I'm going to walk you through how I started and some tips and learnings that I've picked up along the way. Keep watching to know more about it. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions gather together in order to take the next step in their creative journey. With millions of classes available at their platform, I really love Skillshare personally. What I've been doing lately is browsing through Skillshare and taking classes at least like twice a week in order for me to learn new things and at the same time discover more of what I want to do as a creative because in this day and age it's not just about you know learning and then just stopping the learning never really stops and what I like about Skillshare is it really paves the way for creative learning to be possible and accessible especially now that we live in a digital world Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. Most classes are also under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule, which is great because personally I like how I can finish a class in like an hour or two and also write about them. I also have a notebook where I list down all of the classes and the learnings that I picked up on every class. Make sure to keep watching to know more on how you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. That's millions of classes that you can access right at the comfort of your own home. Plus, I'm going to recommend some of the personal favorites that I've taken up in the past months. Also, you get to know more about why these classes work and why I love them so much. So let's start from the very beginning. When I was younger, like really, really young, I remember being a really shy and quiet person. I did not just like to talk. I'm not one to talk. I just literally am with myself and some paper and some pencils and I'm, I'm done. That's it. And growing up, that's always been one of the things I felt insecure at because I'm not like most kids in school where everyone is just really lively and really good with talking and speaking in public. For me, it was really so intimidating. And that's how I basically got through high school. I did a lot of drawings. I had this emo phase, which was, you know, I think most of us had that. And towards the end of high school, I still did a lot of art. I actually got a lot of inspiration because at the time I was in Deviant Art. I don't know if you're familiar with Deviant Art, but it's an art community and it goes way, way back. And I met so many great people there, most of them online. Getting into college, I really thought I would just, you know, leave out the art part, but I moved to the La Salle University and in contrast to being in a Chinese school, it's been really different because in La Salle, I felt like I had the freedom to just be whoever. And with that freedom, I sort of deviated towards investing more time in making art. And that's actually when I started my Tumblr account. So we're going to start with 2010, which is basically 10 years ago. So what started my fascination for art was really I don't know, I really liked art, but I did not know I, what I was good at in art. Generally, as a person, I love all things art. I love music so much, so much so that I actually learned how to play the guitar. I still play the guitar. But what really prompted me was trying out Tumblr. I got into the world of Tumblr, and for me, it was like a daily avenue to just express my creativity. And I wasn't even expecting anything. I just really enjoyed the idea of posting, reblogging. Coincidentally, that time, I have decided that I wanted to start a business. Also, my friend's birthday was coming up and I was like, you know what, maybe I should just like buy tote bags and paint on them, you know. I don't know. School just started, so it was kind of like adjusting to university life. And I started painting five tote bags and eventually it sort of like grew. I was like, okay. I literally just spent like 5,000 pesos or less, that was like less than $100 and I bought tote bags. So 
that was where it all started for me like tumblr and also at the time facebook was starting so i really invested most of my energy uploading on facebook and multiply i did not instagram was not in the picture back then and yeah i really enjoyed it it wasn't even because i wanted to earn money it was also the whole i think like it was something that i wanted to prove to myself because I never really ventured into anything and at 17, what do you expect? I was this like innocent kid. At that time, my only escape from school was basically painting on weekends. So I really, I set up like this little corner in my house, usually in the living room or in the attic. And yeah, I would paint, but it was, it was basically how I worked back then. So I paint each pouch one by one. I did the accounting, how to sell, how to market. It was all like trial and error and I think I always love looking back at that time because even if it was 10 years ago, it felt like I just enjoyed it. In 2012, two years later, I was, I was 19. So at that time, I made a really big shift. Literally, in college, I moved to advertising management and because of the toll in terms of the workload, I also signed up to become an officer for an org. I had to drop my business, but I did start my Instagram account and I did still continue on Tumblr. It was still getting like I would still have posts that a lot of people would reblog and like share. And I also started to journal more, not because Again, it was just more of like an experimental thing, but I did a lot of journaling. It was also the time I got into a lot of young adult books, John Green specifically, which led me to hand letter certain things like their quotes, um, keywords from the book. And I also did a lot of designing and dabbling into the whole world of like collaging, like working with fonts. and. That sort of kickstart my interest with hand lettering actually because prior to that I had no idea what hand lettering was. I mean, when I was working on that in the Philippines, not a lot of people really knew what hand lettering was. I didn't know it was called lettering. I called it doodling. I just enjoyed it as usual. And at this point, I really knew that art wasn't going to be something I was pursuing huh, back then. And I just kept it on the side. So 2014 came, this was a very wild year for me. It was like, I literally had to think about what I wanted to do because end of 20, 2013, I have been doing um, lettering, it was fun. I started to learn more about it. I also am going to graduate in 2014. There, so there were really a lot of things that were leading up to that moment. I started teaching workshops. These were all happening simultaneously, so I kind of don't know what I was getting into, but I, I realized like after like creating this video that I did do a lot of things during my earlier days. Ah, my youth. But that year, I, I worked and I also did a lot of merch. I also um, had a lot of experience in, you know, running a bazaar putting up shop, creating freelance projects. I would also draw on chalkboards because, you know, gotta look for some side gigs. I also worked for a food website, which helped me with my illustration practice. And it was really a lot to the point where I could literally, literally choose where I wanted to go. But being the secure, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of like prove a point in like, okay, I took up advertising management, might as well get a job in advertising. So I did take my job. I graduated in June, but a month before that, I was already working in an agency. I worked there for like 10 months, but that was the busiest 10 months. Imagine working Mondays to Fridays. I just worked nonstop. And on weekends, I go to teach workshops, hold um, events, sell my products. That was the first time I also made merch after the whole uh, tote bag thing because I have not done a lot of uh, merch and design, but this time I incorporated a lot of lettering. So that was something that I wanted to sort of like get into. And it was really overwhelming to the point I really got tired. I also had the opportunity to work on a book. so. It was all sort of like going somewhere, but I did not know where it was going. So that time it was really hard for me to just 
figure out what path I wanted to head to. Leading up to 2015, which was the pivotal year for my... And it's also the midpoint, so like 2010 and then 2015, and then now we're in 2020. So in the midpoint, I really started to ask myself, like, what was my plan? Because I was invited to give a TED Talk early in the year, so that was like February. And on my birthday, my birthday week, January, I actually met up with my publisher for the first time. They asked me if I wanted to work on a book with them because I had been teaching workshops and I was people started to know more about what I do and because of that I decided once and for all that I would follow my passion I mean a lot of people do say that's kind of like cliche but I think for me it was really a big argument between like allowing myself to become more creative and spend really that energy and time focusing on things that I really believed in versus working on a day job that just pays the bills but I'm not you know in internally happy and I'm not grateful so it was literally like I remember telling my publisher like oh I resigned from my job and she was like what? I was like yeah I'm gonna work on the book and uh, see how things go and luckily I also got to work on Havaianas not really luckily it just all happened at the same time I always get this flack like people say how lucky I am and I always do say luck is always a factor but I have been putting my work out there for nearly like two, three years at that time. And I also had a portfolio up. I put up my website. I also started posting more on Instagram. And because of that, I was just really overwhelmed. Like I was like, okay, wait a minute. Then if that is the case, then I probably should just resign. And if it doesn't work out then I'm still gonna be here anyway so at this time my business sort of pivoted from you know I started with the retail aspect like e-commerce selling products and then now it became like oh freelance and books and it's a very new world apart from having the books I also taught workshops because I was like wait a minute if I am having books then might as well teach workshops that way people can buy more of my books so from 2017 to 2019 these were the busiest years of my career the start of the year was really great because I I did have my book published in the United States and that was a big deal for me because I finally saw my book in Amazon and it, it was translated to different languages so that was very cool. I also worked on books locally which was the journaling book. I also did a self-help book and I think a lot of that really stemmed upon my fascination in the whole concept of what being creative w was like and my issue actually back then was like how do I have to qualify to be a creative person or did I have to reach a specific level to be able to speak at a very great conference? Was that my measure of success? I did manage to do all those things. I was lucky enough and I was fortunate enough to be a speaker for Graphica Manila. And I also did a lot of talking gigs. Like I went, I, I did like three years of speaking at the Philippine Reader and Writers Festival in the Philippines. I went abroad, I taught workshops in Germany, I went to Japan. I also was very tired. And because of that, it was really a battle between if I had to keep going for the long haul, like how will it work out? What started as a really fun hobby in 2010 is now a serious job. So because of those episodes, I decided to go to New York and study and I don't think that really helped. It just made me realize how much I didn't value myself at the time. Um, after that, it also led me to go to Berlin, which made me take up an art residency class. Not really class, but um, the whole summer last year where I really experimented on a lot about what else I wanted to do and I think that really helped me sort of like break free. Imagine coming from this 17 year old self who was literally just exploring and like you know having fun and then it sort of like peeked into this sudden like 
five years later, you're like, okay, you have to sign books, you have to create a book, you have to write a book, you have to work on freelance projects. It was really overwhelming for me because I also told myself like, as a creative, it's so hard. I started out as a very quiet kid and I am best when I express myself through words or images. And that's why towards the end of 2019, after, you know, I went back also to Berlin and last year I sort of did not work on anything tangible. My shop was working. I also did work on that, but it wasn't really going great. So I had this really hard time telling you guys about it. Like, sure, I upload videos and share stuff on the internet, but Internally, I was losing a lot of myself and that was the one thing I told myself I would never do like lose myself in the process of Sharing what I know to you guys at some point. I did consider getting a different job I do know I'm pretty proficient at marketing So I was like maybe someone should just hire me to do their marketing and I could just like quit all this ABC thing and like move forward with my life but I don't think I'm gonna rest easy or sleep well at night knowing that I'm just gonna leave this and like put it behind me so I decided to face it head on so this year became a very pivotal year I think it's like every five years so this year I really told myself like okay I'm going to run a shop full-time I felt like the past three years that I've been doing a lot of things for other people I mean running a shop was for other people but there's this really really great satisfaction of just packing orders producing stuff I think this is also going full circle going back to the year when I started painting bags creating merchandise and that was my 17 year old self like telling me like Abby you should do the shop again it's fun it helped me refocus on what else did I want to do with this creative career and what else did I want to share with you in terms of my journey what I've learned and because of that I started to launch my patreon so this year was really great because I told myself like my shift to do more content because I enjoy making content and also to really improve on things that I feel like my skills have been lacking. It was that urge to just move forward and be able to be confident about it and that's really what led me to be here today. Over the years, I've worn many hats. So I was an artist, designer, author, content creator, teacher, and entrepreneur to name a few. And I've traveled far and wide into discovering who I am and what I'm meant to do as a creative. I've always known early on that art and travel are two things I'm deeply passionate about and decided to turn those avenues into the foundation of my artistic practice. I've been very grateful to have met you along the way and knowing that keeps me moving forward. It's been a long journey getting to where I am now and yet it's still ongoing and one thing's for sure, I will keep making exploring, dreaming, and of course, finding ways to inspire others on their own journey. Make the second half of 2020 a year where you explore more about yourself, deepen your existing passions, and join the creative community with Skillshare. The first 1,000 to click on the link down below will be able to get Skillshare Premium for two months free. That's millions of classes where you can just have fun with your creative juices and learn more about what you can do and i will recommend a comprehensive list down below which i feel would benefit you especially if you are at the start of your creative journey or if you want to move forward or you want to find more ways to improve and i hope that one of these or taking these classes will give you more insight on how you can best unlock your creative potential thank you so much for watching this video i know it's a very long one but kind of hard to condense 10 years of my life into one concrete video but i hope that sort of made sense for you let me know in the comments below what you think about this very chatty video thank you so much for skillshare for partnering with me on this video make sure to check out the link again and i'm so glad that I'm working with Skillshare because personally I really love Skillshare's classes and 
they make art so much accessible to everyone else and I am really a great fan of that and that's also one of my missions as an artist. If you want to support me, make sure to check out my Patreon page for ideas and inspiration for your creative journey and if you want to learn more, make sure to sign up for my free email course on unlocking your creative potential. All the links will be down below. Again, I'll see you guys on my next video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more updates on all things creativity and making things happen. This has been Abby, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!